So in this lecture, we're going to talk about emotions and moods. We have to start with the myth of rationality. It, once upon a time, we thought that it was a great idea to make the workplace emotional free zones. I mean, something where uh, we, we just want to keep that out of the workplace because we thought that it was going to lead to greater productivity if we could separate emotion from work. But the reality is that emotions are part and parcel of who we are and they can't be separated from the workplace. Um, okay, so we want to define our terms again. If you see uh, the word effect in the text, effect is kind of a broad range of feelings. Emotions are very strongly felt feelings and moods are more general. There are six universal emotions, anger, fear, sadness, happiness, disgust, and surprise. And so we want to be aware of each of these. Um, and we also want to understand that the way our brain works is, is, uh, part and parcel of why we're talking about what we're talking about. We talk about left brain and right brain, and there's a little something to it. It's not really, you know, completely like this, but certain functions are things like analytic thought and logic and language and science and math. And then there are other functions that are uh, classically called right brain activities, holistic thought, intuition, creativity, art, music, those type of things. Now, it's not just left and right brain so much as there are different functions, but you want to understand that the analytic function and the creative function come from different places. So the, the rational part of your brain comes from the neocortex. The neocortex controls that. The limbic system controls emotions when you feel a shock of fear, that's from the limbic system. That's not from the neocortex. You're not rationally thinking, I should be afraid of the snake that's about to bite me. Now, what's important here is to understand that they come from different parts of the body, so you or parts of the brain, and so it has to be regulated different. But here's something really interesting. Effective leaders usually speak to the emotional, the limbic part of the body, not just the not just the part of the brain that's saying, hey, that's a very rational argument, but the part that's saying, yeah, that's right. And so you want to understand how these are two separate systems working in tandem. Uh, decision making. So we have uh, thinking and we have feeling and you have to have both parts. If you don't have both parts, it's like flying with only one wing of the plane. So you have to understand that emotions and thinking uh, work in tandem. Now, there's this um, interesting phrase. I don't know if I heard it or thought it up or whatever, but I, years ago I used to teach at this little classical Christian school, and I would have um, parents that when somebody else's kid did something wrong, it's like, yeah, go ahead, kill it, lay into them, right? Uh, when their little darlings did something wrong, you couldn't, you know, hardly say anything about their precious little angel because their child was perfect. And over time, you know, it would really bother my colleagues. Over time, I learned to say, you know, it's irrational to be rational with irrational people. And what I mean by that is just like if their if their limbic system has been overtaken or overrun, if they've been emotionally hijacked, you know, just trying to reason with them, it doesn't make sense. You have to let them calm down and relax first before you do that. So emotions are very important to understand. Now, what are the sources of emotions and moods? So there's a starting place of things like personality. There is a trait component. Some people are just naturally placid. Other people are naturally very hyper um but and so there's a matter of intensity in the personality component there's also the time of day people tend to be happier at the midpoint of the day um they also tend to be happier at the end of the work week and that's not just slackers that's everybody tends to be happier at the end of the work week there's some bit about whether the book will say that, so there's mixed evidence the book will say that there's no effect actually there's some evidence for seasonal affective disorder sometimes called sad where if it's overcast all the time people that are prone to depression actually can feel more depressed than otherwise there's an interesting article I, I came across once the stock market does better on sunnier days that's that's crazy I and mean, if you think that people are rational just that one idea alone should let you understand that no no, we're not really as rational as we think we are. Stress, stress obviously has an effect. Social activities, um, if you have uh, strong connections with others, that will have an effect positively if you have those connections. Negatively, if you don't, exercise will improve mood. Sleep, if you get poor sleep or if you've just had a baby um, and you're, you're not sleeping through the night, um, that's going to 
uh, have a negative impact on your mood. Age, older people tend to feel fewer negative emotions. They tend to have weathered things and they're more placid. And then gender differences, women tend to feel more emotions more intensely. That's not me writing that. That's uh, research that Robinson and Judge have put into the text. But there is something to that. Women do tend to feel things more uh, intensely. Emotions last longer and they express emotions far more frequently than men do in general, not all, but in general. Now, there's this interesting concept called emotional labor. Emotional labor is an employee trying to express the right emotions um, because they're at work and they, you know, where they otherwise might not express those emotions. They, this is, you know, something that is required. So I think, for example, of a stewardess who, while she's uh, being uh, buffeted by rude people on the plane, she has to keep this smile on. And what would you like? Would you like this? And, and it's, it's a very difficult thing. So emotional labor leads to emotional dissonance when employees have to project this one emotion while simultaneously feeling, I want to strangle these people on this plane, right? If they're thinking that, they can't project it because they won't last very long. But that can actually lead to burnout, and there are studies that show that. Um, so types of emotions felt are things like felt, which is, I want to strangle them. And then there's displayed, which is, hi, would you like Coke or Pepsi or Sprite or, or whatever, right? So there's a difference between felt and displayed. Now, felt is, again, uh, what you feel displayed is what you're trying to demonstrate in spite of what you feel. So the surface level is just trying to uh, hide this. Hi, would you like this soda? And then there's deep acting. So surface acting is, is more like the stewardess. And deep acting is actually trying to modify your true feelings. Actors do this when they get into um, uh, a kind of acting where they're trying to really embody and feel the feelings that that person would have thought. And so, the, like, you know, you see movie uh, actors and actresses that uh, get uh, emotionally involved while they're in a film and then they break up shortly thereafter the film. They, they fall out of love and, and you're going, well, what, what happened? Well, they were in, involved in that, in that deep level acting so much that they're kind of tricking themselves into this. Okay, so my question here is, do you experience emotional labor, dissonance? If you experience a conflict between your felt and displayed emotions at work, why do you do so? If you do, it's probably because you're trying to um, make sure that you're following the policies. But what's causing the difference? I mean, what is so grating at work that's causing that? And you have to think through uh, that and see if there's anything that can be done about it. Emotional intelligence is one of the few things I'm going to wrap up with, and then we'll, we'll wrap up for the, this lesson. So emotional uh, intelligence is a person's ability to um, perceive others' emotions and tune into that and not trample on others' emotions and regulate their own. That's very important as well. Okay. Now, there's, it's a little controversial. There's some evidence against it. Um, for example, how you define it, and it's hard to measure. But there's also a good deal of evidence for it. Um, Daniel Goleman, for example, has made a, uh, a big part of his career dealing with emotional intelligence. Along those lines with emotional intelligence, you have to be aware that if you are the boss, you can create emotional contagion. That is, that we'll actually catch your emotions. You set the emotional temperature of the room. If you come in and you're having a terrible day and you're throwing things around and upset, right? We're going to, whoa, what's going on here? If you're having a great day and you're happy, hey, we, we key into that too and we feel more relaxed. So be careful because... You know, Shakespeare said all the world's a stage. Well, it's a stage for you when you're in leadership. Anytime you're in leadership, you're always on. You're always being watched. Managers can influence uh, moods uh, just by being in a good mood themselves. And selecting positive team members will also help influence moods. And the implications here are beyond that. And that's an important implication. But provide positive feedback. Uh, to increase positivity for employees. They really do need your positive feedback. They're, they're looking, they're queuing into you to understand whether they're doing a good job or not. And especially if you don't tend to give a lot of feedback, they're doing it even more. Also, don't ignore coworkers and employees' emotions or think that, well, you know, you got to keep that, those emotions out of, the, out of the office. They're human. They're going to carry it in. That's just part of being human. And finally, regulate yourself. Sometimes we think that, um, you know, well, I don't have to regulate myself. I'm going to tell them how I feel. You better rein it in because if you don't regulate yourself to your subordinates, what's going to happen is your subordinates are going to be go, you know what? If you're going to be like that, I, I'm just going to uh, do what you say and... I'm, I'm not going to do anything more. I'm not going to step out of line. And they won't give you their best. If you, you know, let it rain down on them, you wouldn't do that to your boss, right? You wouldn't just let your boss have it. So don't do it to your employees, okay? 
Regulate yourself. That's a key part of emotional intelligence. Well, that's it for this segment on emotions and moods, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Thanks for your time. Thank you.